Hello, today we're going to look at calibrating the humidity on your Kestrel 123 series or Kestrel 4000 series. Over time, the Kestrel humidity sensors are the one sensor that will tend to drift, and it's 2% every plus or minus 24 months, so every two years um, you should think about recalibrating the humidity. We can get a Kestrel RH calibration kit, and customers can recalibrate their Kestrels in the field. The RH calibration kit comes with an insulated bag. The contents of this bag are a magnesium chloride jar and salts, a sodium chloride jar and salts. Both come with grids that you will put in a jar, and then one jar that will be filled with tap water to stabilize the temperature. Everything is color coded to make things easier. And finally, we have a measuring cup that will help us prepare these salts for this RH calibration. So the first step would be to prepare the salts for the humidity calibration. We'll start with the sodium chloride, and please note that this is laboratory grade salts. This is not the same salts you're gonna get at a grocery store, so please don't try and attempt this without any non-laboratory grade salts. And always use distilled water when making these uh, salt mixtures because Distilled water has no impurities and I'll make sure that the humidity inside this chamber reaches the proper level. So once we pull everything out, including this spacer grid, we're going to open up the container for sodium chloride. It's marked red, marked red, the sodium chloride salts, and we're just going to dump everything into the container. Now we need to fill this container with distilled water and we want to start and it's 15 milliliters of water. So we want to go to the red line on this jar and you always want to start with less and if you need more, then you can add more. So we want to take some distilled water and fill it up to 13 milliliters, which is what is recommended. Always start small. Um, first, don't go over, and you can always add a little more at a time because you do not want to make this mixture too wet or too dry. We're going to fill this one up to the red line since this is the red jar with the sodium chloride. It's 13 milliliters. Always go slow or small to start, and then you can add a little more if you need to. We dump the water into the container, and then we're going to gently mix it together. I have a little plastic knife I'm using. We don't really want it to get on the sides, but we want to make sure the water is evenly distributed across all the salts. The goal is to make a non-too liquid or non-too solid mixture. It's called a slurry, and there's photos in the instruction manual that will help you determine this. If you put in too much, you will have to bake it in the oven for a little bit. If you fill it up too little, you can always add just a little drop more and more. Next, we're going to put this spacer grid into the container with the prongs at the bottom so it sits up in the middle, and then we're going to close this jar tightly. Next, we'll move on to the magnesium chloride chamber. So we're going to open this up. We're going to take the blue with the blue label, dump all the salts in the bottom. Now, if it's real humid, you may have to break this up a little bit. Use a different knife than the first one because you do not want to cross-contaminate these items. And when the liquid comes in, it'll help break it up as well. Please again note to fill it up to the blue line. You may want to go a little below it because you can always add water. You can't take water away. Now we're going to take this distilled water and add it to the salt mixture. While it looks like it will not dissolve all this salt, you will be surprised at how much it does. Again, we are trying to get a slurry, so if it is too solid or it is too liquid, then we haven't gotten our right result. Once we are done, we will take the other grid spacer and put it in with the prongs to the bottom. Take our lid and close it up tightly. Finally, we have the unlabeled jar. And for this jar, it is fine to use tap water. You want to use room temperature tap water. 
and you're just gonna open it, take the tap water and fill it up. This is used to stabilize the temperature and uh, everything is then gonna go into the calibration bag, all three jars. You wanna close it up tight and let it sit for several hours to stabilize the temperature before you begin the procedure. After a suitable amount of time has passed, we recommend 10 hours. This will all be at the same temperature and we can start the process to do the calibration. Now open it up and we're gonna start with a Kestrel 3000 series. This will work with any of the Kestrel 123s that have humidity in them. You'll start by hitting the left button with the center button so that P1 appears. Now we gotta enter the first value of the first chamber. It should be programmed in. We hit the center button and we see that it displays 34.3. We need to make this 32.8. So we're gonna hit the left button until it goes down to the proper humidity for the first chamber. Once we have that, We'll hit the center button to move to the second value, which is P2. This is going to be the value of the sodium chloride chamber. So let's hit the center button, and it says 72.3. We want this to be 75.3, as noted in the instructions, so let's increase this until we get to 75.3. Now we'll hit the center button. Now we're ready to start the humidity calibration. Once we hit the center button, we're gonna have to put this unit upside down into the first chamber, which is the magnesium chloride chamber. Please note, if you have a two button Kestrel, the instructions tell you to do these in the reverse order. Once we get the magnesium chloride chamber, we're gonna hit the center button and you'll start seeing it flash C1 and 60. This means that it's gonna go for 60 minutes in this magnesium chloride chamber. We want to be careful to wrap the lanyard around so it doesn't touch the salts and we're going to stick this upside down in this chamber and close the lid. Once the lid is closed, we want to put this back into our calibration kit and seal it up and set your timer for an hour. We're going to remove this from the magnesium chloride jar. And it's very important that we wipe down any residual salt or liquid that would be on the Kestrel. Hopefully the spacer kept it from getting wet, but just to be sure, just take a paper towel, make sure that there's no um, excess salts on here. Now we can close the magnesium chloride chamber. We've wiped off the Kestrel and now we see that there's C2 on the screen. This means it's calibration of the second jar, the sodium chloride. So when we're ready, we'll pull our sodium chloride jar out and hit the button. And you'll see it start counting down from C2 to and 60. That means 60 minutes in the sodium chloride chamber. So now that we're up counting down, we're gonna open up the sodium chloride jar. Again, you wanna wrap the lanyard to try and not get salts on it. And then you gotta stick it on the spacer grid inside the chamber. Close it up tightly. and you're gonna put it back in the insulation chamber. And come back in an hour and the process will be done. Another hour has passed, so let's open up the calibration kit. We're gonna open up the sodium chloride chamber. The unit will say end on it, signifying that it's complete, but we also wanna wipe it off Make sure any excess salts are not on the lanyard or anything like that. Once we hit the center button, we're back into the regular mode of operation with a calibrated Kestrel. In order to calibrate the humidity on the Kestrel 4000 series, you'll turn the unit on and press the power button to get to the main menu. You will scroll down until you see system Press the center button to enter the system menu and scroll down until you see humidity cal and hit the center button. The P1 
period is going to be 60. That's going to be the amount of minutes that you want to leave it in each chamber, so do not change that. You'll go down to the RH.1, and you want to make sure that this reads the same as the first chamber, which is 32.8%. But use the left and right if it doesn't to adjust this to 32.8. Start 1 is when you're ready to do the first tank. But first we want to look at our second RH point and make sure that says 75.3. This says 72, so we're going to up it until we get the 75.3 to match what's found in the sodium chloride chamber. And now when we're ready to set this up, we'll go to the first start point we will hit the center button. You will see that the countdown starts at 3600. Now we are ready to take this and throw it in the first calibration chamber. So once the start one has started the countdown from 3600 seconds, let's open up the magnesium chloride chamber. If we had a lanyard, we'd wrap it around here just to keep it out of the mixture. Close this lid tightly, and then we'll put it into our RH calibration kit zipper it up and leave it untouched for an hour. So an hour has passed, we'll open up our calibration kit, pull out the magnesium chloride chamber, open it up, and we're going to make sure we wipe off any excess salts, including the lanyard, because we do not want these salts to mix with the next container. Once we're done wiping that off, we'll close up the container and we'll pull out the sodium chloride container. We just pulled the 4500 from the first calibration chamber and now we're ready to proceed for the second calibration. We'll go to start two, we'll hit the center button. Again, it'll start counting down from 3600 seconds. We're gonna take the Kestrel, put it now in the second calibration chamber and wait an hour. We're gonna open this up, put it in the sodium chloride chamber, tighten this up and put it back in to leave undisturbed for another hour. Now we pulled it from the second calibration chamber, the humidity has been calibrated and we can hit the power button to get back to the main menu. And notice that our humidity is now within spec again.